Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's uh, Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing, but you already know that, don't you? Because that's why you've tuned in. Right, today we're going to talk to Mozza from Birmingham, aka Gareth Morris. How are you doing, Gareth? Yeah, good, thanks for seeing you, mate. All right, Gareth's an ex-British Boxing Board of Control referee, amateur and professional. Is it amateur and professional, yeah? Yeah, I'm a professional referee and inspector as well with the board, and then I, I'm on the unlicensed circuit now, refereeing Russ. Brilliant. Uh, how are you doing, Gareth? Are you okay? Yeah, yeah, all, all good, thanks. Yeah, just shame yeah. the boxing's been hit for me at the moment, but yeah. hopefully it'll be sorted soon, mate. Right. Uh, what do you want to talk about today, then, Gareth? We, you saw the video that I did the regarding strength and conditioners, and you yeah. uh, had a lot of feedback from it. It's a bit bit like Marmite, the feedback, but I'm not really bothered. But what, what do you think? What did you think about it? And I think you've got a book there that you wanted to talk about. And Yeah, the, the, there's, a, there's a book I purchased a few years ago. It's not a well-known book, probably. It's called The Ark of Boxing, Mike Silver. And funny enough, it exactly backs up what you said. It's, it's about the decline in boxing skills in boxers nowadays comparative to years ago the golden age was the sort of 1920s to the 50s they reckon and it's because there's declining trainers yeah. and it, it, it exactly mentions about this strength and conditioning business see the old the old time boxers i mean the old school like my father they were fit people anyway and i totally agreed with you you know um, about you see, boxing, it's, it's a, you, need, you need great stamina, you know. You, you've got to put the work in. Um, and I had, an, I had a debate years ago down the gym about Joshua. And this was when he was, when he was world champion undefeated. And there's a, P, a PTI down the gym. And I said, I don't like all that bulk. It's the same, we had the same issue years ago with Bruno, didn't we? You see, if you, it's no good lifting weights all day. That's not, that's not going to help you in a boxing ring, I can tell you now. And um, I, I said when he was, and this is when he was undefeated, Joshua, and um, see, boxing, you need stamina. You see, you've got to, you've got to do the old ways. You do you used to do the road work, you used to do the bags, the sparring, and, and the body work, the calisthenics, I think they call it, you know, using your body weight. And they were, and they were fit hard people. Training. Proper, you see, hard training. You see, oh, this is it, the, training. Core training, yeah, yeah, you know, and um, this, 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 honestly, you can't beat it, you see, but, but you're right, it has come in, and funny enough, this strength and condition developed, there's, um, there's, a, there's a, funny enough, a chat a bit mentioned about Tyson when he boxed Lennox Lewis, and we know it was the end of his career, and it was, pro you know, he'd probably a payday, wasn't it, you know, he'd blown his money, but it actually says, um, if I read this out, it was Customata, Mike, Mike Tyson's original trainer did not attempt to enhance Tyson's natural strength with weight training or steroids. Years later, with D'Amato long gone and nearing the end of his tumultuous career, Tyson began strength training with Gunnar Peterson, a Los Angeles-based strength coach popular with showbiz types. And it basically goes on to say he put on about an extra 20 pounds of showy muscle and it, it, it counts against you. It didn't help him one little bit. And I remember years ago, Evander Oddfield actually, you know, did did an article, I think, in Boxing News saying about old about some of the old time boxers, how actually hard some of them can, could hit. And there's a great fall this is the thing about weight. You see, you can be 1920 stone. It doesn't mean you hit, you know, tremendously. And put and this bulk can count against you, Russ. And uh, they need to get back to the boxing training. I mean, and also there's another issue there with with the knowledge being passed on. There's there's which is another big thing with the book. There's a lack of boxing knowledge, old school, old time trainers, boxing knowledge. There's 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 not a lot of that about, and that used to be passed on years ago to the boxers. Do you feel, Gareth, that boxers nowadays are more bothered about how they look than how they can fight? Yeah, well, you see, you see this this is it i mean you know you can cut out the carbs you know you can starve yourself you can not eat the crap and have a six pack doesn't mean doesn't mean you're you're you know you're going to last in a fight i mean we all remember you go back years ago to tim witherspoon against bruno and you know 
Witherspoon got slated, didn't he, about his, you know, a bit of excess weight, but who lasted, yeah. you see? But you see, Witherspoon had old school techniques. You look at that fight, you know, cross arm defence, you know, he, you know, he had some good old moves. But you see, this is another issue, you see, the old school trainers around. In this book, um, there's a good input from Teddy Atlas and Freddie Roach. And um, they talk about, see, Freddie Roach attributes, he's, he's, he's a very knowledgeable trainer if you listen to him talk on boxing. But he, he learned, he had his apprenticeship under Eddie Futch, you see. Teddy Atlas had Customata, you see. And, and in the old days, they reckon there were, there were like 20 coaches as good as that in, in Pittsburgh and another 20 as good in Philadelphia. And all these people are training boxers. And that brings you on to the other issue which has been brought up, all this nonsense about protection of records, 20 fights, 20 wins, 20 KOs. They haven't boxed anyone. In the old days, they used to box each other, Russ, and gain experience. They had loads of losses, and they reckon there's some tremendous fighters about. Yeah, uh, I tend to agree with you on that. What do you think about the nutritionists, strength and conditioners, nutritionists? Sometimes they come as a pair. Or on their own? Do you think that's needed in the sport of boxing? No, I, I mean, go back, go back to 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 what's uh, what's effective. You see, as I say, yeah, the old do your road, do you know the old road work they used to do the bags, the sparring, you know, and as I say, the body weight work. That's where you will get a good a good core of fitness. Um, having I mean, it mentions in this book about Tyson, you know, the, 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 you know, if it had been a bodybuilding contest, you know, it, it'd have been well away, but boxing isn't a bodybuilding contest. You've got, you've got to have the fitness with it. And those exercises, they are good strength and fitness. I mean, I'll tell you a classic example. Sonny Liston, he was one of the strongest guys you could ever want to meet. I mean, what a Liston would, would do nowadays, you see, it, it, you know, <laughs> He really could go through go through the heavyweight division, but he was mixed up with the mafia. They took over his career when he left prison, and you know he wasn't treated very well by a lot of people. But you see, he was he was only he was fifteen and a half stone listed. And I tell you something, he was a tremendously tremendously strong guy. But you see, as a kid, Liston, his father used to be a sharecropper, and where the mule pulls the old plows the fields with the old you know the thing, the mule died, and Liston. When he was a kid, he says, you're the mule. And you can imagine the kind of strength you build up pulling a plow through a field up and down all day as a kid. But the old school, you see, they used to, my father used to bite miles, referee a football match, bite back again. Nowadays, some people, they won't walk from here to, you know, 600 yards. Yeah, all right then. Uh, well, okay. Uh... The England amateur setup. You want to talk about that? Yeah. England amateur setup. Robert McCracken, about 170, I think, 180 grand a year on there. He's a professional trainer with Joshua. Um, uh, the other guy, in fact, I've got a picture here when I boxed with him. Um, Woodall, Richie Woodall, two days a week, 40 grand a year. He's obviously he's had pro licenses, trainers, licenses, managers. And, and the ex-pro, there's people in the game who've been in the game forever who stayed amateur, and I'll tell you, who, not, who are world-class trainers who never get near the top job with the England squad. Now, Robert McCracken's a great example to use. Robert McCracken was a boxer for Birmingham City. There's a guy, Franco Sullivan. Now, he's got the MBE now a couple of years ago. He's been running Birmingham City since 1956, six days a week. And he learnt off an old pro called Ludabella from Liverpool, who was a very, very good boxer and a very good trainer. But Frank, he made McCracken. Robert, I think, got to the silver medal at the world's first one ever in the country. Frank's made the Ufoy. He's had the Ufoy. Cal well, Ufoy. And... Years, though, what McCracken got that silver. Yeah, yeah. He Rocks got, were the he... first person to get a medal of the seniors. He got a bronze. Yes, yeah. He, uh, McCracken there. I mean, he also reckon he got he got turned over against against that idiot Dodson in the amateurs as well. McCracken he won, but they give it to How Dodson. Many? No, Adrian Dodson. He oh, was Adrian Dodson. Yeah, I've got a second different age, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, there's, there's there's a story there with Keithy Scott, another brilliant trainer. But um, but yeah, 
Frank O'Sullivan, I mean, he's made so many ABA champions. I mean, now Frank did run for, for nothing. He run for nine years, the England schoolboys, and was very successful. Now, he's not doing that now. I think there's a guy on 40 grand a year there doing it now. They're not having the success. But it, it frustrates me that, and they reckon, I know people who go down there now. I know a, a lad who takes someone down there now. He says they don't coach them. There's a guy on there on the podium squad who, when I used to, box in the amateurs they used to moan he, he's a crap trainer he's on 60 grand a year and he's, he's still there now and um but there's people like frankie o'sullivan you know i mean tony burns was at the repton for years he's never had the top job on there mick carney the late mick carney who you know from the lodge all these really knowledgeable boxing people keith scott you know brilliant trainer. they've all made these aba champions from kids russ etc they don't get put on there and yet, I'm told there's people on there who haven't got a clue how to. There's coaches you wouldn't, you wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't employ them. But um, it's another example of, you know, jobs for the boys, isn't it? Uh, well, yeah, it sounds a bit. I don't mind McCracken actually. He, he, I've met him; he's not a bad fellow. Yeah. But I don't know ins and outs of amateur setup like you do. But I do know that it's a. It's a well-known fact that Richard Woodall's ready to step in, you know, as soon as he steps down McCracken. Yeah. So it's it's like it's like the old Liverpool team, isn't it, where they had the boot room, isn't it, where they brung them through. Yeah. What they've got going on up there at the EIS, it's like a conveyor belt for match room, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's wrong. And, and like you say, yeah. It's wrong. But all right then, well, moving on, you wanted to give your, your pal Keith Scott and Frank O'Sullivan that we mentioned you have. Uh, yeah. you wanted to go into conflict of interests in sport, didn't you? In with boards and sanctioning bodies and things like that. We spoke yeah. about, I don't know about conflict of interest with England thing, maybe there is because McCracken's up there, he trains Joshua, but he's also involved with amateur setup. Joshua's managing fighters at Matchroom. They're trained by McCracken, Joshua Boatzi. They're all using facilities up there, but they're supposed to be for amateurs, aren't they? Yeah. But Matchroom yeah. is up there using all the, all, the, all the facilities, all the high-tech stuff and ice chambers, steam chambers. There's all that in there to make them stronger, faster, quicker than a speeding bullet. Isn't there? <laughs> Everything, everything's there. So yeah. Yeah, I suppose you could say it's a conflict of interest. But another conflict of interest is Adelaide Bird and her husband, Robert Bird. Now, they've done 1,500 shows between them. They've had the noses in the trough with Nevada State Athletic Commission for years, and yet again, there's another incident with we, we, one of them at the weekend, isn't there? The, the, the wife, obviously, she's had a lot of incidents with her. Awful judging, but he's piped up again, hasn't he? You remember him? He, he's the guy who let... Uh, the WBSS fi uh, semi-final at uh, the WBO belt I think it was Klaunaki and Bradis and one of them I think it was Klaunaki he got dropped didn't he with 20 seconds after the bell things like that and he were out he were out three weeks later working again now he's involved in this VAR situation at the weekend didn't he Robert Bird yeah. where the guy's been punched but Bologna's punched Franco and, get, and his eyes swelled up. They've, obviously, the referees jumped in. They've looked, they said it's an headbutt or whatever. They've looked at the thing for half an hour and they're trying to justify now that it were, it were an headbutt. Obviously, it weren't. And it's it's a massive story in boxing. It's the biggest story in boxing as regards judging for a while but and, and referees. But it's because of the VAR situation now. It's not VAR. That's only a camera. It's just a camera yeah. VAR. It's the people that operate the camera in it. We know about the Everton Liverpool game where they had a goal at winning goal ninety third minute that were on side and what were the other one? Van Dyke got chopped in half by Pickford, didn't he? So yeah. <laughs> what are these people going to be made accountable? I'm on about Robert Bird and the people that are running the situ this situation. Are they going to be made accountable or are they going to come out in next week or summer and say, oh there's going to be a rematch or we're overturning it because that's the right thing to do. Well, what about doing it on the night? What about the kid on the night who was distraught? Yeah. He could get to hold the belt. It's all right if ringing him up saying, yeah, you're a champ, but you've got to do a rematch, a third one. What's all that about? Do you feel that these people, like 
it does happen with border control. They don't tend to come and be accountable for the mistakes, do they? Yeah. Now, Robert Smith, when there's a bit of heat on, he just comes out and fires back venom, doesn't he, on IFL, and that's it. He'll fire venom and say, well, we're, we're, we're right and nobody can question us and blah de blah Do you feel now that these people are out of touch with what the fans want and that they are aloof? Yeah, well, you see, they're not accountable if they're, if they're in the club. As I say, just to touch on the board, A-star referees are run to... I told you this. I said it on the first interview I did to you before this O'Connor business. I said, didn't I say to you, they're untouchable? Yeah. And I don't know if we mentioned about... I think we, I did mention about O'Connor then. And then subsequently you had the issue. Now... If you're a referee lower down the, the scale, and, the, uh, and there can be some, some damn good ones, but if you do the slightest thing or don't even do the slightest thing, but just you've opened your mouth, you will be destroyed, you know. You, they'll, they'll, they'll hammer you, you know. But this is the old, you know, this is the, this is the problem. You know, what you need is you need people in, good people, good boxing people who are independent, independent of thought, you see, who are prepared to do the right thing as opposed to thinking what someone else might want them to do, Russ. Yeah. Well, what it probably needs is I'll I'll have I'll have a few people stick a stick an eyeball on Charlie uh, Giles or Robert Smith when they go to the yeah. parties, and I'll just turn up and shove a camera in the face. Yeah. Now then, how long have you had your nose inch off? Because I will do that, and I'm pretty fearless. And they don't really. Yeah. Bother. And uh, you watch what happens. That they'll just uh, get get him away from me, or whatever. They'll just call for security because they don't like putting putting put on the spot. But these people <laughs> have been doing what they want for years now, and it, it's time that people knew about them because they're killing <laughs> the sport. They and are. Didn't they go under? Nearly go under about 25 years ago. They, they did, you see, this is the other thing that, that frustrates me, you know, with, with the narrative, as, as you say, of boxing border control, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant medicals, brilliant medical facility. What they don't want to tell you is, oh, this has come in when Michael Watson sued them and won and he bankrupted them, you see. If they're so brilliant, right, why, why are they... Before? Why wasn't it before? And equally, I mean, I know I keep banging on about it, Russ, but it, it's peed me off for years. I suggested eight years ago to the, to the board about wearing gloves, giving, and I even said it, giving the referee a choice, right? We still, you can't find one British boxing border control referee wearing a pair of gloves, even in COVID. I mean, what's the problem? That's, that's what you're up against. But yeah, they, they got bankrupt and Frank Warren bailed them out. Well, they should thank Frank Warren, but did Frank Warren do that for favours or do they now know, well, we owe Frank one? Uh, it, why would Frank Warren bail them out with a lot of money? He's well, you see, for him. Yeah. What's in it for Frank? Well, you see, it, 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 in fairness, is that not another conflict of interest? Because technically, Warren, Hearn, they're all licence holders who are supposed to be under the jurisdiction of the Border Control. Now, Frank's bailed them out, which... We, we, we know, we know. Well, well, when he did that, actually, I want as I want like when he did that, I want like I am now. I didn't feel like I do now about boxing. When he did that, I thought, well done, because yeah. Barry Hearn didn't bail him out. And Michael Watson got injured on a Barry Hearn show, didn't he? Barry Hearn yeah. got out of dodge, didn't he, after that? Yeah. And Newbank got beat, didn't he? Not long after the second time for Collins, and he bailed out, didn't he, Barry Hearn? But to be fair, I give Frank Warren respect for that. And we can't say that Frank's done it for favours, but should they even be accepting money off a registered promoter manager? Well, look at it like this. What if a situation occurs where the board should come down heavily on Frank Warren? Well, they did, didn't they? They stopped him having the Chisora hay fight and he went to Luxembourg for a licence. Yeah. And then yeah, they bit the pants, didn't they? And thought, oh, everybody will go there now. So then they changed the tune, didn't they? After. Yeah. So you've got you yeah. Frank credit there for taking them on, but because he likes litigation, but he ain't gone for litigation with this Tyson Fury Cabayel thing, has he? No. Because that's off now, isn't it? And so he's on back foot there. So I don't know, but conflict of interest. Should he have been lending them money? Well, if he's if he's tried to help boxing, that's a good thing. 
But yeah. It's boxing, isn't it? And when you've got money changing hands like that, is it for favours down the line? We don't know, but I don't think it's good of the board to do that at all. I don't think it is. I don't think it's good at all. Obviously, but they haven't. They haven't. I've never known them disclose it, Russ. Have you? Well, I admit it. Yeah. Well, Frank, I've, I've never. Frank, Frank Warren spoke about it in yeah. uh, some newspaper, hasn't he? Yeah, but but the board, not the board. Yeah. So he spoke about helping them. So that's a good thing. I've seen it in interviews that he's done. So it's out there in public domain. And I think it's a good thing, but I'd like to, I'd hope, I'd like to think that it weren't for favours and that the sport's clean, but it's wrong yeah. for the sport, isn't it? Rotten took core behind the scenes. Yeah, it Not is. Core. But uh, what can you do? It's, uh, we keep saying it, don't we? It is what it is. We'll have to look. It is what it isn't. Moving on then from uh, Frank Warren and the Adelaide, I want to just talk a little bit about the Adelaide bird situation. Now they get up until a few years ago. I don't know what they get now, but if you're a judge or a referee out there, I remember that uh, the disclosure thing for the Manny Pacquiao, Tim Bradley fight that they, were, that they all kicked off about and it all had to be disclosed what they earned and this and that. Now, going back then, I, I'm not sure how long that will go. It's seven years ago, six years ago, something like that. Seven years. It, it, they were on £8,000, the judges. The $8,000, right? So you've, yeah. you've got... You're in Vegas, aren't you, from the Wednesday, right? You're there from Wednesday. And they go home, don't they, on Monday. So Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. So you're there five nights, six days, five nights. You're flown out there, fed and watered, you get a few casino chips. They might get extra chips to promote her. They have butlers. They have limousines. We know what goes on, don't we? I've seen it personally. Not in America, because I've never been there, but seen what goes on over here. They get what they want. Now, if you're getting what you want off these promoters, say a Vegas promoter, and they're looking after you, when it's a close decision... Because you've been trekked nice. And don't forget, these hotels have got shops in there. Fur coats, clothes, whatever whatever you want to buy. Everything's there. You, put, you just ch you charge it to the room, don't they? This has been going on for years. No money is changing hands. And they're not telling you to throw a fight. But humans are creatures, creatures of habit. You think, well, this is all right, isn't it? Now, when it comes down to a decision... If fight's a bit tight, if you nine times out of ten, they're going to go for home fighter. This is why they say, well, it's an hometown decision because it's been going on for years, but we've been talking about hometown decisions for 50 years, haven't we? Now, it was all supposed to be sorted after that. Didn't Jake Lamotta give evidence in that trial in the 50s against them mafia guys? Yeah. Got them sent down or something like that. Point I want to make is, We've been, it's been going on since before I were born. It's it's a sport that's not governed. You know, for example, Tyson Fury failed, failed free dope test, didn't he? Right? Yeah. Angelone, which is a steroid, isn't it? Cocaine, yeah. and then he refused the test. Right? So there's three issues there. That's a 12 year mandatory ban because there's three. Yeah. Cameron got Liam Cameron got two year for first offence, one line of cocaine, a small. A recreational bit they said 0 0.4 or whatever it was some MA. Yeah. so he, if that had been football right football the for, sport of football Rio Ferdinand right he missed a test didn't he because he went shopping yeah and when they grabbed him they took an air sample didn't they and it, the air sample goes back six months so he proved he were clean but he just missed it he got an eight nine month ban didn't he straight away no messing about and a massive fine now Tyson actually took some it, didn't he? And there were one where he refused, and other one he took some it. He got done for cocaine, Angelo, and what a refusal of one, which is supposed to be worse than others. Ferdinand didn't refuse; he just went missing. So, yeah. if it were football, we'd be screaming it front rafters, wouldn't we? Screaming, but we're not about boxing, are we? Dylan White's drug test, his B sample. We still haven't had his B sample, have we? They kept yeah. push if it weren't for Thomas Hauser, who had who had friends at Varda, we wouldn't have got to know about it, would we? Because Eddie Earn didn't disclose it. 
the trainer, Mark Tibbs, didn't even know, but Dylan White and Eddie Hearn knew. And they only spoke about it because they had to do now, but Eddie Eddie wouldn't elaborate on it. He said, oh, it's, it's all legal issues. We can't talk about it. And the B sample, nobody's seen the B sample. So point I want to make is the sport's rotten to the core. Rotten yeah. to the core. But if you're at the top, tying it down at the top table on pay-per-views, you can do what you want. If you're just a guy, Commonwealth level, British level, or they'll make an example of you to send the message. The journey, yeah. they don't even get tested because they're not fighting for belts, are they? Yeah. You know what I mean? So I don't know. I don't know what the answer is, but I think we need some... I think what it needs is it needs an overhaul. It needs these old guys, these old timers, your Bob Arams, people like that, Don Kings. They want putting down, don't they? They want putting out to pasture. Don King just ruined the show last week, and he Dave Allen's fight against Lovejoy. Yeah, it got pulled, yeah. Don King pulled it, didn't he? James Bond villain, 90 year old pulling shows. The yeah. one out in out in the sport, Aram as well. He, he's he's rooted. Bob people forget Bob Aram. He 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 got uh, done, didn't he? In 80s with that IBF scandal, didn't he? Do you know what I mean? People forget about yeah. this. You know, where they were paying for rankings and stuff like that. People forget about this. Bob Arum were knee deep in it with IBF, knee deep, and he got done. Bob Arum got done. Now it's all on Google. If you go look, there were Bob Arum. There were there were a few. There were a few of them. Which Kushner got done, didn't he? He got ripped mm. off. Didn't he? Be hundred thousand dollars, Frederick Kushner. So you were having to pay IBF for rankings to get your guy in the rankings. Now I don't agree with that. You should be there no. on merit, but it's, yeah. It's, it's, there's, there's world champion boxers out there that shouldn't be world champions and there's kids who don't get a shot who should but they've got nobody yeah. it's now more important to have a big a, a team behind you than it is to, to just than on ability yeah. if you've got a team behind you you can end up with a few quid can't you you see what yeah. but I, like I said I don't know what the answer is but I think it just needs an overall the sport from top yeah. to it's a disease and pork is the cure <laughs> like I said, I, I just want better safety. I want fighters to be protected more. I want pensions for fighters. I've pulled border control about this at shows, and and they put listen. The ref come over to me, right? I'm not going to say his name. And he said, "Oh God, every time they see you, they go that pork is over there. He's going to pull us about pensions for fighters, and they just disappear." I'm yeah. like, I'm like the elephant in the room. When I go in the room, I empty rooms, and then usually yeah. I put myself in an empty room. But I just think that fighters need treating better. There's got to be pensions for fighters. There's got to be some. We can't have incidents like Michael Gomez. You know, Michael Gomez, have you seen him now? He's not in a good place, is he? Who's yeah. looking out for Michael Gomez? But there were a time when everybody was hanging out at the back of him. He beat Alex. Yeah. And he, he was red hot at the time. But what's, yeah. what's, what, what, what's boxing doing for Michael Gomez now? Oh, yeah. Well, what's that, that... for uh, Dave Jules from Doncaster or... Neil Malpass, people like that. What's boxing doing for old pros? Have they got like a pension like footballers have when they're 36? They have a bit of a pension, don't they? There's no for boxers from from boxing board of control. The boxing board of control don't even want to entertain talks about it because I pulled that Les Potts about it before I went to my interview for my seconds last, and he was like, Ooh. And I thought, oh, I've probably shot my sending foot here speaking about that because we had a good chat. He felt me out for about 10 minutes, you know, about boxing and this and that before I went to the interview. But they didn't want to sit and talk to me about it. You know, you know about yeah. pensions for boxers and what about brain scans for them every 12 months after the career's over? They didn't, I had a list. I was even a list. See, Les, can we have a look at this? Oh, oh, oh. That's what they were like. They don't care about fighters. Look, we all know the Lee Purdy story, don't they? This is my new best friend, Eddie Earn. Lee Purdy from Essex. When Lee Purdy were no good to Eddie Earn, he was discarded like rubbish, like Eric Coaching. That's the nature of the beast. Yeah, I understand that. But who's looking out for these, these Xboxers? Who's looking out for them at Border yeah. Control? Promoters aren't because they're, they're, they're too busy. Boxing Board of Control, they take money off these fighters every time they fight. So why aren't they putting some of that back into into these boxers? Get, at least give them a brain scan every year. What do you think? Exactly right. But but the, the board 
are scared of anyone with any original thoughts. They're resentful of anyone. I know because I told them when I was a license holder and your cards marked. And you're, you're exactly right. All that all the board want to do, and it's the same with all these old clubs, the FA are the same, is inertia. They're just interested in protecting the status quo, keeping themselves there and not rocking the boat and not doing any anything really unless they have to. So you've got valid points, it's right. I just want to see something done. And, you know, there's yeah. all that money going into EIS up there, English Institute of Sport. And the facility. Yeah being abused aren't they by matchroom fighters yeah McCracken's Ed Honcho up there and I ain't got a problem with him but what I do have a problem with is matchroom fighters that are professionals and not even amateurs up there using the full facilities and yeah we'll have a pad session with Richie Woodall today Richie Woodall's there to be a pad man for the amateurs and all them other coaches that are up there they're not there to ponder for professional yeah. fighters go and look at it on the website Amateur. When McCrack, when Joshua turned pro, McCracken weren't even allowed in the corner. They had to put Tony Sims in, didn't they? That's right. Yeah. But how come after a couple of years, McCracken were running corner? Why is that? Because he's still up at the EIS because they changed his job title. It's a bit like uh, the guy in the film Casino. The casino. Uh, I forgot. He, Robert De Niro plays a guy in this film Casino, and and he and he's he's going for a, a license, a gaming license, and. They just change his job title every now and then, don't they? Just so he can run the casino. Well, that's like that with McCracken, isn't it, up there? And it's been going on yeah. for far too long. He needs an all, an all, a full overall. That's what it needs. From top to bottom, from EIS, lottery funded, to British Boxing Board of Control. How about some of this lottery funding going to for fighters to at least give them a scan every year once their careers are over? What's up with that? Even if you've had one fight... Because you've still done your training and that. If you want to scan every year, it's there for you. Instead of having to... Because it's like 700 quid, isn't it? Do you know, yeah. Medicals, 700 pounds. What about giving them free medicals? Free medicals for these ex-fighters. Eh? It's, it's exactly. But the border control, they don't even want to pay the trainee referees um, expenses to get for, for, for going to shows for two and a half years. They don't even, So, you know, they, they don't even want to do that, Russ. Well, they get 45p a mile, don't they? Oh, oh yeah, but but not when, when you're a trainee referee and it takes a minimum of two... They can keep that going forever, but it takes a minimum of two and a half years to get a, a pro licence. That, that's one good thing with the board, to be fair. You do gain experience, but it, you, it's tr it's pretty shoddy that you're not even paid, you know, expenses, you, you know, for, for going. You've got to do all that off your own expense, Russ, and there's no guarantee that you're going to you're gonna get through. So if they take a dislike to you... And make life difficult. Oh, well, they're, they're not bothering me. I'm not bothered about them. They, when they see me, they hide me, they hide or they turn away. So they, they, they don't, yeah. they're not getting my way. Nobody will. But the point I want to make is that it needs an overall. It, needs it, a it does. Uh, you're right. And it's a shame some, some money can't be ploughed back. People like, as I say, Franco Saluni, East Clubs at, at um, Sparkbrook over Birmingham, these clubs struggle, Russ, you know. To, 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 to maintain, to keep going. You know, Keithy Scott is, is down Dartford, a little tree estate club, I say, brilliant trainer. But they these these amateur clubs, it's a shame. Some of these, especially when they've, they've made some of these, these boxers and these people in the sport, it's a shame some money can't go back to them. Is it just to help them? Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, I want to finish on... Uh... A couple of things. What did you think about Kel Brooks' performance? Yeah, funny enough, I didn't see it uh, live. I, I watched. I watched the the replay. You know, um, not. I, I wasn't. You know, wasn't greatly impressed. I know he, he came out. He came out orthodox for a, for a while, didn't he, Crawford? And then, but it seems as soon as he caught him, Russ, that the writing was on the wall, wasn't it? You know, yeah, he's a shell of a man. I mean, yeah, people keep going on about oh, he looks great on scales and this and that. Look, it's what's behind that in looking, yeah. Good. Larry Holmes never looked great on scale, but he, he had 20 defenses at every weight, yeah. And he could, he could go that he could go the rounds exactly. Go the round, look at look at Yui Fury, yeah, look fantastic on scales, look, aesthetically. But yeah. Peter has him doing 20 rounds in sparring, 23 minute rounds, yeah, that's an hour. 
an hour with headgear on and big gloves and still going strong. So exactly. 12 rounds to them is nothing, is it? The 20-round 20, 20 fighters. But uh, yeah. So I won't fool by that because I'd like to think I do know a bit about boxing. So I, yeah. I called it correctly and I feel vindicated. I got the round wrong, do you know what I mean? But I feel yeah. vindicated. And all them people that said to me, oh, Bokey, you've got it wrong. Kel Brook looks great. Knock him out. Got chocolate brownies. He's eating steak. He's eating steak. He's got strength and conditioner and nutritionist on board. Look. Strength and conditioners can't do fighting for you, can they? Yeah, ex ex exactly. There's no substitute for the good for the good old fashioned hard work. Hard graft, that's what does it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and technical. It's been, been on weight ages as well, but that doesn't mean anything either. It, does, it, it doesn't. It doesn't. And technical work. Let's just say that's another that's another lost thing. You know, all, all this. I used to hear it from some of them. You know, oh, we, you know, we, all this hard sparring. All we used to. And all this, it's no good. You know, you've got to, it's boxing's an art of skill. You've got to do technical work and practice it if you want any hope of improving. Some people like Hamid have got that reflex. They've got that, you know, and a lot of box, you know, long arms and lucky, you see. But boxing's a technical sport and that's what you need to practice to improve. Yeah. All right, then. What do you think about the news that Callum Smith is going to fight? Oh, sorry. Let me just back, back up a little bit there. Uh, Eddie Earn come out and said about Beefy Smith and Kel Brook is a possibility. But it, what, what do you think to that? I mean, after that performance Kel's has put in, have they got no shame? Kel's strength and conditioner guy said that, yeah, I'd back him if he wanted to fight at 154. Do you think that this boxing's... I mean, it, he mentioned it about Dave Allen as well, didn't he? He said that that if Dave comes back, it'll just be for money. So he didn't say no, he wouldn't have him back. But you feel that yeah. the promoters have got no morals? Well, you know, I mean... You want to see Kel Brook fight again or Dave Allen after what we've just heard? And... No, no I, I, after that, I don't I don't want to see Kel Brook, no. You know, I mean, not not, a, not at all, you know, because it's just, it's just pointless, you know. I mean, as soon as you're getting caught, the writing's on the wall, I mean... Brooke, obviously, you know, he went in with Golovkin. He's he, he's had and he, you know, and um, Spence, who's who who was very good, but unfortunately has had an accident. So that'll be interesting. What happens with Spence? Because I, I like Spence, but he's been Brooke has, has has had some hard contests, and you know, it just it just it just doesn't look like it's uh, there now, does it, Russ? You know, I, I don't want to see. It don't look no. It don't look like it. Listen. It doesn't look like it's there, but boxers use it last person to know because everybody around them's telling them that the the, the, the he man you, you can do anything. You're a warrior, and and because the people around them that are telling them they need them to fight because the noses are in the trough. They're getting yeah. so they're going to look for the positive. Well, you look great. Oh, well, you're hitting hard, and oh, look, you've done that sprint in that time. So, and, and they'll jot it all down, these people. But you're not, he don't know what times he's doing these sprints. And then he's thinking, oh, brilliant. I must be doing better. I've got these people on board. Well, they're going to say that, aren't they? Because they're getting paid. Uh -huh. You see what I'm coming Yeah. Well, oh, I, I do. But the thing is, when the boxer's lost, when the boxer's on, on the bottom, or, you know, you know, they're no longer, you know, no longer sort of a flavour of the month. How many of these people, like you say, are, are around? How many of the hangers on are there then? They walk off, don't they, then, and disappear into That's the night. It's the problem oh, between yeah. people and, yeah. and people who aren't. Yeah. Uh, let's finish off on the news that Callum Smith is going to fight Canelo Alvarez on the 19th of December in, in Texas, I believe. Could be wrong on that, but it's America. What do you think? It's not going to be on Sky. It's not on Sky. It's just going to be on the zone in America and the zone in the UK. Eddie Earns pushing a fight in the UK on the zone, but he's got a deal with Matchroom. His Matchroom company have got a deal with Sky. What do you yeah. think of that for big news? The brass neck yeah. on Eddie. Sorry, Russ. The brass neck on Eddie because Sky have built Callum up to, for the biggest fight of his career. And he's going to be going on Dazone against Sky in the UK, charging £10 a month 
for subscription and Sky obviously can't compete with that. So what, what do you think to that? Yeah, well, for, for having to pay, you mean, Russ, because it's going on well, this is how it, This is how you've got to look at it. Six pay-per-views for a year, if the 25 quid, yeah? Let's say the yeah. 20 quid, but tw- Josh, you want the 25. Six 25s is 150. Six 20s, which is what they do a year, is 120. Tenner a month from the zones, 120, but you can watch every day all year at the zone and all their channels. Or you can have six nights of boxing, at the same price yeah. with Sky so or so so what would you do it's going to be the zone isn't it because it's what's that 60 times 60 yeah. times cheaper yeah if something's 60 times cheaper if you're going to buy a can of beer and it's a quid you're happy but if it's 60 quid you're not going to buy that one at 60 quid are you yeah See what I'm coming yeah. And you're paying a lot of money for your Sky, your BT. People are paying a lot of money now, aren't they? Yeah, so Eddie Earns jumped in with them now. I, I dare say that money will go up every month, but it, they're trying the same model that they tried in America, but it didn't work over there. But Eddie seems to think it'll work over here, but I think it'll only work over here if he leaves Sky and they get rid yeah. of Sky. If this is the demise of Sky, have they had it come in? Yeah, because they've been spinning narratives for years, especially the last 10. Have they had it coming? Will I be happy to see them go? I'll be over at Moon. I'm not going to be one of them people that say, oh, I'm gutted Sky have gone under or they stop boxing. I'm gutted it's bad for boxing. No, I want them to go under. And yeah. other people are like me, all, all, all have the same opinion as me. They'll be laughing, but they'll all come out on their social medias and they'll go, good that Sky have pulled boxing, but it is what it is, isn't it? Listen, there's people who are dancing because it looks like they could be in a lot of trouble now, but they've had it coming. Nose is yeah. off. Yeah. You want to listen to Adam Smith for another 10 years, spinning narratives and inventing stuff and scenarios when fighters walking out to the ring. You've had enough of them before the fight starts. I don't want to hear yeah. that. When I, every time I see him, I want to reach through the telly and squeeze his neck, ring him like a little rat that he is. That's what I want to do with him. Mr. Bean, but it's it's one of them things, isn't it? It's it boxing, it reaches into the core of us and it, it, it makes us emotional, doesn't it? We get emotionally involved with what we want and what we want to see is right. And there's a lot wrong with sport at the moment. And I'm finding it very hard to find positives, you know? Although the Callum Smith Canelo fight is a good fight, it is a good fight, and that's positive in my eyes. It's just the bullshit around it, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's a good, it's good, good. That is, that is a good match. Yeah, come on. I mean, fair enough that Canelo's got a better resume, but we want to see Callum Smith tested. Yeah, they've delivered. Whoever, whoever made the fights delivered. So I'm pleased good. about it. I'm really pleased. So, so, anything you want to add before you uh, go go do what you've got to do, and before we end the video, uh, Gareth. No, no, just thanks very much, Russ. As I say, it's good to talk to you again. All right, then. Well, listen, you take care, and I'll speak to you again, then. Thanks for coming on. Thanks, Russ. Cheers. Cheers, mate. Bye. Bye. Right. Well, that were uh, Gareth from Birmingham. Enjoyed that. He knows his stuff. Very passionate man about boxing. And I look forward to having him on again. So, all right. So, I'll try and get this out today. But if not, it'll be tomorrow. So, I hope you've enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe and leave a comment. And if you would like your turn to come on the channel, if you're brave enough to uh, come from behind your keyboard, that is. It's porky corner at mail.com. There's no capitals and there's no S in that. It's just porky corner at mail.com. Send your details in and somebody will be in touch and arrange a time for you to come on. So have your questions ready and topics that you want to talk about. All right. Thank you very much. Peace out. <laughs>